This wasn't supposed to go this way. This was supposed to be a completely different video. The engine was just limping. It was running on three cylinders, it sounded like. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be changing the injectors as these went a little faulty to say the least. First things first though, we need to test these injectors to make sure they are indeed faulty and that something else isn't going on. Because the last thing we want to do is cough up 14,000 bucks and it not be the issue. What can happen with the injectors if you cannot replace the nozzles, it might be your solenoid. You can't replace your solenoid. That is, you'll have to buy new injectors, and that's very expensive on these Isuzu's. Right, now first things first, take the cover off. Next thing we'll want to do is unbolt the intercooler that's sitting right on top so we can actually get to the hoses and everything where the injectors are sitting. Now I just opted to take this plastic hose off, all it took was a 10mm spanner and off it came and obviously it's just your map sensor on top that you need to unclip. The intercooler itself just has a few 12mm nuts and bolts that keep that onto there so you can just go ahead and put some sockets on it. Now that the intercooler is out the way you can actually see where your injector piping and electrical connections are and all these you want to take apart but carefully these fittings break so easily it's not even a joke and don't even get me started on finding these fittings all i use to get the clamps off these pipes are some long nose pliers and some very gentle persuading what i decided to do is just get some extra hose and pop it in there just so we've got some extra length to work with and put our bottles in places where it's not gonna fall over and rattle around. Now the last portion of the main return line I just clamped shut. Not sure if it would help or not but I just did it to be safe. Now each one of these T fittings on the injectors have this metal retaining clip that goes over the top of it. This you need to remove so carefully, just pop it out on the sides and pop it over the actual T piece because like I said you don't want to break that T piece and worst case you actually break that T piece inside your injector. On my first try, I actually just tried to push a pipe directly into the return of the injector, but that didn't work out. So I ended up pushing the T back and just blocking off one end of it with another pipe and a bolt inside that pipe. done is I bought me four of these little mini bottles so that I can where's the light in this car <laughs> I found it sort of it doesn't help me much oh that's the light I want perfect okay so I've bought me four of these little bottles and I'm on my way back to test the injectors on the back <laughs> <laughs> Shh! Release parking brake. What do you mean? <laughs> so, see you guys when I get back on. Now that I have only four returns for the injectors. I will push all of these into their individual little bottles. Now, to be completely honest, you don't need to put your intercooler back on for this to work. You can just run it as is, but I just put it on because, well, I'm me. <laughs> put the battery terminal back on and let it run for a while.
after a while the motors warmed up we can go ahead and switch it off and then check out the levels in our bottles so as you can see they are not the same at all that's not good now why does this mean exactly i'm not sure which one is faulty are they all faulty or is one performing excellently i don't know but we'll leave that up to the experts we'll have these reconditioned if we can so after the test is done you're going to want to undo all the mess you've made then some wires that you have to take out the way obviously take off the plugs from the injectors just wiggle those loose very carefully and then unbolt your tappet cover to act get to your actual injectors now this part you'll only need a 10 millimeter socket there are a few 12 millimeters involved and then you should be good to go Now on the side of your motor you've got your fuel lines coming up and they've got two clamps holding on two pipes each. Those you're going to want to loosen up, take them out, that's just another 10 millimeter socket. Now at this point nothing's preventing you from actually taking off your tappet or rocker cover. So you can just shove in a screwdriver at some wedge points if you can find any and then pull up piece by piece slowly just making sure you're not damaging anything. It looks nice and green. Now with these four JJ1s, you've actually got the fuel lines going through the head of the motor. So they've got these nuts on the side that you just have to loosen up to be able to pull the fuel lines out. And that uses a 19 millimeter open-ended spanner works best for this. It's a bit fiddly, but it does the job. Now to loosen up the clamps or brackets that hold the injectors into the head of the motor, you're gonna wanna use a 12 millimeter socket and there are only four of these bolts, one for each injector. Oops. Okay, so these bolts can come out. It's very interesting. Now these injectors can be wedged in there pretty good, so you just need to tug on them a little just to feel them out, twist and turn if you can, and just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until it comes out. They ain't coming out easy. But it will come out without having to force it with something. This has had better days. You gotta do it weak a little bit. At least that doesn't want that one didn't have a bolt on it. Alright, so we can just get back at this little Oh, it's that one, yeah. Wait a little bit. Yep, you see it come right out there like that. It likes the wiggle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oops, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I hear there are bumps, you guys. Put that right there. Clean this up real good. Look at that one. That's a beauty. Just take this out there, that over there. On a rag like real good nice. This one's gonna be a bugger. Oh yeah. I got it, I got it, I got it. Don't worry, I got it. Now, can I get this out? I'll take that plate off. No, it's probably why people do that. Okay, okay, all right. I see, I see. That there's number five bullet bulb. Shit. Now, right at the back by the fourth injector, there's this splash plate that you also have to take off. Otherwise, there's no chance you're getting that injector out. Oh, shit. Okay. I need sockets. Oh, that hurt. That hurt good. That hurt good. There we go. Okay, there we go. Don't, don't hurt the injector, please don't hurt the injector, please don't hurt the injector, I don't have the money for that. Ow! Hurt yourself, you'll heal, don't worry about it. Oh, 
Oh, that's dirty. That's a lot of work. Where does this one go? That is for this little solenoid thing back there. Oh, hell, this one's for the intake box. Hold on. Move these two pipes as well, put the tap cover back on, and then keep the dust free for the most part. <laughs> okay, so I've now got my injectors back from reconditioning, and I want to give a massive shout out to Mo's Diesel. These guys are amazing. Um, these injectors, these are all my old injectors with some new nozzles and but they look brand brand new like everything about it looks brand new i guess it's got the new nozzles um but even the packaging is, is great and they even give you a little test report just to say that everything is tested okay i wish they would have uh, included the before also I wish they included some more technical stuff like the exact flow rates you're getting and stuff like that. Now obviously with putting the injectors back, it's just the same steps as before, but in reverse. these half seals there are four of them you're going to want to put some silicon sealer over it just to make sure it doesn't leak any oil in the future and then you're just going to want to put a new seal on your tappet cover put the tappet cover back on you've got four seals around your injectors as well and then i just gave my tappet cover a good well-deserved clean after 250,000 kilometers
perfect. This one goes on the next. Now, after you've remembered to tighten all your injectors, every single bolt on your tappet cover, remember to put your fuel lines back as they were originally, put the clips over your T pieces, and pay extra attention to how these sit. If they are loose, just bend them in a little bit just so they can fit more snugly, and then that should be good to go. This is so difficult to get out. So many short things. Oh no. Oh, God. My back hurts. Oh shit. Oh yeah, something happened. Could you please go that way now? The bubble. It's coming. Push. Okay, well, everything's going wrong now. Work. Oh, I think I'm making some progress. Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. This was on there. Pull on there. It's clean now. Not that you're gonna see it, but if you guys want to see a front mount intercooler install, I think it might be worth subscribing for. As you can see, my power is out at the moment, but that's gonna do it for this video. On the next video, I'm gonna change the fuel filter and then prime the system. So. Subscribe if you want to see that and stay tuned because the bleeding is also part of what you're going to have to do when you change the injectors. So, see you guys in the next one. Push out.